So uh, I think for for my talk um, today, I would like to focus on a proposal um, that is mainly on the principles of military AI, uh, but I will also talk about the frameworks uh, for military for responsible uh, military AI. I, I, I hope. To some extent, the um, the motivation is to uh, it's not to reach a consensus for today. The the motivation is to find the important topics uh, for further discussions. So I would say, um, so so this is the motivation for uh, today's um, topic. First, I would like to uh, give a, a a comparative study uh, and complementary view. For the ethical principles of um, of defense AI, mainly. Uh, so here I list uh, some of the representative um, AI um, principles uh, worldwide related to 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 defense. Uh, so everybody, I think, is familiar with the U.S. trying, the U.K. trying, and also from NATO. And for these two years, China also uh, published some position paper uh, at CCW, as you can see. Uh, so basically here, uh, a, a glimpse of the comparative study would be that you see many commonalities already. Uh, that means that are, there are not so much differences in these texts. So there are commonalities, for example, for, for responsibility, fairness, traceability, reliability, and also controllability uh, has been covered by most of the, you know, the, 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 the proposals. Um, for, for, for the China's trying, uh, we were talking also talking about uh, AI for, for good and avoid malicious use and app use. Uh, mitigate the, the proliferation risk and also, also open and inclusive um, and enhance understanding and coordination. So, so basically, you, you see a large scale uh, um, consensus instead of uh, contradictions. I will see the complement. I will see the differences as complementary view um, that we can learn from each other. So this is, I think that's um, very important. Um, and also for those, you know, people like nice words. We, we already have a lot of nice words, mm, but uh, we also need to go into the, the, the details. Everyone want, wanted, you know, meaningful human control, human in the loop, but the advancement uh, doesn't really match for, you know, for, for, for those visions actually. Um, so this is a not not a new trying. It's like four years ago already uh, that you see that um, a human really in the loop, um, but um, but actually controlling multiple UAVs uh, by brain computer interfaces simultaneously. Well, for me, I think it, it will be very hard. Uh, 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 let's not talk about brain computer interface, just talk about computer games. If you wanted to control, you know, multiple UAVs together, it's already very, very complex, let alone brain computer interfaces. So there are many, many challenges uh, along that line. For example, for the safety security issues for decoding the brain signals to control, um, that, that goes for the safety issues for deep neural networks that most people are using for decoding the brain signals for today. And also for this scenario, the, the cognitive overload for meaningful human control is a huge problem that makes the control will be no longer meaningful. Like I said, uh, controlling multiple UAVs simultaneously by one human brain uh, is challenging for everyone. So what I also would like to say, this is also true for AI-assisted and nuclear weapons. Um, when cognitive overloads happens, um, that also could be a lot more risky um, um, for AI-assisted nuclear weapons, although human can be in the loop. Um, also, negative impacts to human autonomy and agency, that's of course. And then that makes human in the loop will no longer be effective. That means no, almost no hum human control uh, in the loop then. 
and also challenges for responsibility and uh, accountability uh, due to you know the negative side effect to human autonomy. Uh, so we, we we need those principles, but we also need to move forward from, from, from principles to uh, to to practices, and also we have these uh, somewhat consensus. So what about the complementary views? Can we? You know, agree on some of the complementary views to move these commonly agreed principles as a step forward. Uh, so this, I think, this is the motivation for us to have the defense AI and arms control uh, network. Not only to reach some, to some extent, some scholarly level uh, consensus on, on principles, evaluations, uh, the way forward. But also, you know, to put all the efforts together so that we get to know, you know, the advancement from each from each side. So this is why we built a, a semi-automated -auto system crawling all the for now all the English liter literature's reports about defense AI and arm control, uh, tracking for now approximately 30 sources uh, in a semi-automated. Uh, way and um, maybe for some of you, you have the English translation, uh, English papers, and you've already see uh, on the right side that uh, the the machine translation is already producing a Chinese version for your uh, work for the Chinese audience. So we will cover more languages later uh, when uh, when uh, when 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 needed and uh, welcomed for this kind of trying. I'm gonna focus on for the rest of the time. I'm gonna focus on the principles of military uh, AI. This has to be discussed uh, whether we should go for military or uh, defense um, AI for for this trying. But I would like to raise some key points here. Uh, it, it's not the detailed discussion, but I think that you know the directions has to be. Uh, clear whether we we could go for this this direction for meaningful discussions. So um, I, I I think of course we should be vigilant about lowering the threshold of war due to the development of military AI. That's for sure. And and also for for, for this network we need to actively work to prevent avoidable disasters. Uh, and also uh, you know the the the, the ethical um, um, preparations along all the uh, life cycles of uh, military uh, AI. Um, so uh, so I think military AI has to should be applied to national defense and its application in national uh, offense operations should be opposed. And also defense AI should be adhere to the principle of minimum and necessity. And deployers of such technology should, should strive to minimize unnecessary harm. Uh, and we also must forbid the use of these autonomous uh, weapons. Uh, also, we, we we need to talk about whether um, whether we should uh, forbid the, the the selling uh, of the, these autonomous weapons. Um, we we also must ensure meaningful human control. Although this is really hard, how can we guarantee? But at least uh, we we need to you know have that consensus and move things forward. And also avoid cognitive overload during human AI uh, interactions, just like the examples that I mentioned just now. We also must ensure the safety and security of military uh, AI applications and ensure AI systems decisions are transparent and explainable. I think these are very familiar to all the audience. Um, we wanted them to be trustworthy and reliable, although this could be very uh, challenging, uh, but we need you know more concrete uh, approaches and roadmap to move uh, to move things forward. And we also should measures to mitigate and avoid potential biases in in this data to human uh, and not human operator, and also uh, avoid uh, tar targeting specific groups of people and ensure justice. Uh, we also must advocate the use of AI. Uh, in military AI op op operations for humanitarian relief without harming other lives. Uh, I think a technical and ethical assessment of military AI is very essential because this really grounded the ethical principles into reality. Um, also, we, 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 we've been talking about the proliferation of AI, web 
of AI, but here we wanted to argue that we, we must prevent the, prol uh, the proliferation of AI weapons, not the AI uh, technology. I think that's very different. Um, and also the system should be in full compliance with international and humanitarian uh, laws. Uh, the 15 uh, the, the point should be very important in a way that for, for the chemical weapons, nuclear weapons that we've been talking about just now, these are AI-enabled or AI-assisted uh, military systems. They should still fully comply with the norms of their respective uh, fields. And last but not least is that the relevant personnel using military AI systems should ensure the adequate training, um, etc. Uh, so I, I think we also should talk about what the uh, the, you know, the, the necessity or the acceptance of um, AI to, to be used uh, for disinformation, uh, just like the, uh, my, my colleagues uh, just mentioned for those using deep generation uh, neural network to generate fake information. That's, I, I think we also need to avoid this kind of uh, trying. This is, of course, um, ethically uh, not acceptable. Uh, by having, uh, uh, I, I hope to use the 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 upper discussion to stimulate to stimulate the discussion not only for today but to uh, you, you know to to make some detailed work offline uh, uh, supported by the defense um, AI and and now control network that we built together uh, together with many centers um, all over the world uh, including many of the centers uh, from today. Uh, lastly, I wanted to talk about the military, the, the responsible military AI uh, framework. Uh, so and we need to ground these ethical principles and the international laws in, into the whole life cycle. That is the research, development, deployment, use, and design. Well, on the other side, uh, the, for, for military trying, so at least we have two stages, that is uh, military preparations and military conflicts. Uh, so for the design, research and development, it's, it's more related to, are more related to the preparations and also the use and deployment are more related to military conflicts. Uh, well, for all of them, I think we need to reach to some extent an ethics ready arms control with whole life cycle evaluation of assessment and traceability and accountability for uh, you know, for, for, for the whole uh, trying. Uh, we've been bear in mind that this is really a multi-stakeholder, uh, you know, mechanisms uh, with Eugene Complex, uh, with contribution not only from the governments and the army, but also with supervision from in intergovernmental organizations. And most importantly, the leading source should be provided by academia like us, and also, you know, Supervised um, uh, by general public and 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 many others. Uh, with all that, I, I thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, uh, Professor Zeng Yi. This is a very insightful uh, presentation. Um, I fully agree with your point that if we just look at the files printed by published by the governments, there seems to be a lot of consensus. Uh, a lot of same words used in all the files, um, but we have to go in, dive into the details of the words. What do the words mean and uh, whether those words really can be applied in the uh, AI uh, arena, whether that's uh, uh, what are the feasibilities and uh, what are the concrete details. So uh, I would give the floor to others to give comments and uh, questions, but I'd like to use my uh, my advantage being the moderator to raise uh, a couple of questions first, if you don't mind. So if you deep dive into the words, uh, if, when you talk about principles, uh, it should be minimum and then uh, only at the uh, necessary level. So if you could elaborate on what the minimum and the necessity means in AI, that would be very helpful for us to, to understand. And the second question is actually uh, what Professor Cynthia uh, Kono uh elaborated in the chat box, even though in Chinese, I would quickly mention that he has a good point that law is, uh, this autonomous uh, spike is the 
may be the key, it's the most essential part, but no country will really just declare itself as AI enabled, right? So, so what was the, uh, was a category, how, how to how to have the category uh, in this sense. And also another one I wanted to mention is uh, you said about technical and ethical assessment. Um, it's true that we need to have that assessment, uh, but who could be the actor to, to, product, to conduct those assessment? Um, we, we don't trust any government in the, uh, government to do so, right? And what are the possible international organizations to do so or, or what else? But I would just leave my question there and uh, I'm looking at the screen. If any of you have questions or comments, I would give the floor to you and then go back uh, to Zeng Yi uh, at the end to answer. Yeah, I see um, Guang Yu Qiao, please. Can I just have a quick reply about your questions? Because I think sure. that's are uh, all very important uh, questions. Uh, sure. I, I think the, the the proposal for necessity and, and minimum trying uh, is, is based on proportionality, uh, where there are two reasons. One is that do we really need AI in many of the occasions? Um, okay. If this is really necessary, then then and also lawful, then then let's try this. Well, on the other side, uh, my concern is that the current AI is a is a faked in is a faked intelligent information processing tool, which means it's not intelligent. Um, it's not really intelligent. So it pretends to be intelligent with you know human like. Uh, sensation perception but actually it, it doesn't it, it does not really understand uh, from the human perspective so that makes ai already very very dangerous to be used uh, in, in in military ai in in many occasions so so this is why uh, we, we've been talking about the the necessity uh, the necessity part so i have to uh, make it clear uh, now, as a technical AI researcher myself, I, I me myself don't really trust the result of AI as uh, for decision making, even for assistance. In many cases, it's not also not really uh, effective. So we, we we don't want it to bring these challenges, you know, uh, to very or already very risky um, uh, domains. So can we go to uh, Franco? Um, yes. Uh, yeah, please. Um, Professor Zhang, a um, great talk. I uh, have learned a lot from your presentation. Uh, so my question is mainly regarding uh, the first principle you proposed. Uh, I, first of all, I want to say that I think it's a great initiative to like uh, try to come up with some like um, common principles that are shared by academics. Um, so regarding your uh, the first one, so. Uh, my question for you is that, uh, 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 like you, you mentioned that uh, we should uh, use uh, uh, like military AI for defense purposes only, not for offense. Uh, so uh, I'm just wondering that it, would that be actually um, uh, just possible to separate uh, weapons for defense and offense purposes in practice? Um, because sometimes like the line between these two categories of weapons can be blurred in reality. Uh, and also, uh, like uh, regarding that, uh, uh, so I have been following the uh, like just the uh, UN JGE uh, CCW uh, negotiation. So uh, some national delegations, including the US, raised the view that it's actually unethical to not use uh, AI weapons, uh, like because of like with technology, uh, like it, it develop keep developing, and then so. Uh, AI will be able to better to tell um, combatants from civilians, uh, and also so like in a way that it can promote the compliance of its international humanitarian law. So I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Thank you. Thank you so much. I think for now I I, I cannot I cannot uh, uh, declare this is my proposal, but because this is um, a a collective effort uh, from the network. Well, on the other side. Uh, I think uh, here uh, AI is not a special case. W what we wanted to argue uh, in, in, in here is, of course, w as hu as humanities, we don't we welcome you know the, the, the 
if in dangerous um, areas, we we've been very welcome for national defense. In well, we don't welcome national uh, the, the the offense uh, operations in 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 general. So I think um, AI is not a, a special case in here. So I think th that is what we wanted to uh, talk about. Well, again, I think um, uh, for those sentences uh, now it's. It's open for comments, and we actually wanted, uh, you know, the the concerns can be ra raised uh, uh, if these um, principles are not uh, are not sufficient um, and uh, in, in in the uh, not so right uh, directions. So maybe it was as one of the our members for the network. I welcome you to make detailed comments for the, for this. Uh, for this. Yeah, text. I will not give the floor to General Panva, and we. Actually, aim to finish this uh, uh, specific theme uh, within one minute, but I will extend it into two or three minutes, and then we will move to the other discussions about uh, AI mechanisms and governance, if that's okay. So, uh, to the general panel, please. Yeah, thank you so much for the interesting uh, talk, uh, Dr. Zeng. Uh, just a couple of points which I wanted to raise. One is, of course, related to what uh, was just brought out about uh, opposing. EI in offense, uh, a comment on that is just difficult to distinguish. Well, that's one point. I'll just elaborate on that also. But uh, even within offensive weapons, if we just state a principle oppose incorporation of AI in offense, uh, I'm not too sure whether that can be accepted as a principle because there are many uh, aspects of offensive weapons, for example, in navigation in certain areas where incorporation of AI, uh, really speaking, should not be very objectionable. I think what is being meant here is in the decision-making, that means the entire loop, it should not be fully autonomous offensive weapon system is possibly what is meant uh, when framing this principle. But if we just say AI is not to come up in offense at all, uh, maybe a little too restrictive for people to accept. So that's that was my point. A small point on the way of distinguishing. I fully agree that most of the weapons is very difficult to say it's meant for offense and defense, but there are certain types of weapons which can be clearly stated to be in a defensive role. So, for example, anti-missile uh, defensive weapons, which is anti-material and is not even lethal, uh, that can be classified. I'll give an example, the Iron Dome of Israel or the U.S. Phalanx. They are meant to be defensive weapon systems which are attacking projectiles. It's not even attacking humans. So that can be, some of them can really be classified as purely defensive weapons, but I agree that most weapons can be in a dual role. The second point which I had was, was on the uh, uh, the same, the minimum that what uh, was raised uh, by Liu, I think, on the minimum and necessity, and you explained the proportionality and necessity part of it, and whereas later on, there's another principle which is stated as international humanitarian law. So I think these two things possibly are interrelated and possibly the same type of principle because international humanitarian law talks of principles of proportionality, military necessity, etc. So possibly there's an overlap between these two principles which have been stated. And the third final point which I thought I would uh, just make is on the explainable AI front, there's a principle, everybody's talking of, uh, almost everyone talks of there should be explainable AI. My own view uh, is that explainable AI may be required uh, wherever decision-making, et cetera, support is there, but in certain types of AI functions. So for example, object recognition, if object recognition AI is employed and statistically the reliability requirement is met, Really speaking, there should be no need for explainability there. But if there's a decision support where prioritize uh, options are being offered to commanders based on which they are supposed to take decisions, well, then the reasons behind how that uh, priority has been arrived at possibly is required. So in short, what I'm trying to say is explainable AI may not be universally required across all functions of AI. That's all. Thank you. Uh, thank, thank you very much, General Pamar. Um, I give you one minute, uh, Professor Zeng Yi, to respond, and then we will move to the second second part. We still have yeah. three other speakers. Hope that's right. fine. Thank you. Um, if I may, I will go to question number three from General Panwa. Um, I, I think for many of the perception-oriented uh, applications, just like what you 
uh, mentioned. I think the, the AI system should have uh, explainability if they wanted you, uh, if you wanted to explain why they're making this kind of uh, sensory um, decisions. So they should have the ability if required. I'm not saying in many, in any of the uh, scenarios you have to explain. And in fact, uh, for those deep neural networks, it's lax, uh, very lax of explainability. So, so now what we can do is to gradually increase the in explainability. That we cannot say we must have explainability. That I agree with you. And for your first two questions, uh, mostly I agree with you. And also as uh, uh, one of the members for the network, I, I will get back, back to you and Franco uh, in details for, for the first proposal on, uh, on the defense and offense um, trying. And, and let's make a refinement um, as you suggested. Thank you. Thank you very much, Professor Zeng Yi. That's a very rich introduction, but to be time conscious, we have to uh, move to the to the other parts of the work, but we definitely can uh, continue the uh, exchange uh, through emails and the follow-up discussions. So Thank let's... you. So uh, just now we've been talking about the, the, the principles um, and people are focusing on the, you know, the, the, the defensive weapon and offensive weapon, but actually what, what we really wanted to bring is a scholarly vision that we support, you know, AI to be used for national defense instead of offensive behavior to other country. That's not a defensive weapon or offensive weapon. What I wanted to emphasize in here is that as scholars, we we need to contribute to, to our leading thoughts to all, to all over the world. Although some of the leading thoughts may not be really practical, but the, scholar, the scholars uh, as ourselves, we need to deliver the, you know, the, 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 the right information to the world uh, to express our concerns and to reach our consensus as uh, from the academia uh, level uh, for practice, then people will see how this uh, uh, can dig into uh, practice. But as uh, academia as a whole internationally, we need to have our uh, common visions. Thank you.